Hi everyone, Karine over here with Broken Ground, and today I wanna to talk to you about what we're still eating from our garden. So it's March here in Montana, there is still snow on the ground, but I just recently planted some greens in my greenhouse. I have some seedlings uh, growing in my basement, um, but we are still eating from last year's garden. And so I wanted to share some of the things that we're still eating uh, and some of the preservation techniques that we use. So let's start first with what is has been in our pantry now for several months. So we have a few different types of winter squash that are holding up fairly well uh, after five months. So this is a Lady Godiva squash um, and it produces these naked pumpkin seeds. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why a lot of people grow them. The squash itself isn't the tastiest of squashes, um, but it holds up really well. Uh, the baby Hubbard squash as well has held up pretty well. And up until three weeks ago, I also had some acorn squash um, that held up pretty well as well. So all of these have just been in the mudroom, uh, which is on the north side of our house. So it's cooler in the mudroom uh, and I've covered them up um, so they're not exposed to light. Uh, the other thing that we have are still eating are onions. So these onions have kept up until now. Um, we're getting down to the smaller versions of things, um, but we're still eating onions uh, from, and they again have been kept in that same mudroom area. And we did have uh, potatoes as well up until about three weeks ago. Um, so all of those things, I love those because they're winter storage crops. You don't have to do anything in terms of preserving them beyond just harvesting them, which I love. The other thing that we have coming out of our pantry or that we're eating from our pantry are dehydrated fruit. Um, in this case, um, dehydrated pears and apples. We still have some of those. Um, I would highly recommend this as the best way to preserve pears. Uh, when you dehydrate them, they taste like candy and they are delicious. Um, so I highly recommend this is um, the top preservation technique for pears. I find that um, pear sauce isn't as exciting as applesauce or as versatile, so um, I'd recommend that. So we still have some dehydrated fruit um, that we're eating. Uh, the other thing we have as well are um, dried, um, in this case this is mint um, that I use um, in teas. And then we also have things like dried oregano and dried thyme um, that we're of course using in our meals. The other thing in our pantry is this uh, canned grape juice uh, from our grapes. Uh, and this is actually one of the few things that I can. I'm not a big canner. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that we have two um, chest freezers um, for our wild game meat. My husband is a hunter, so we typically have um, both venison and elk and often antelope um, in our freezer. And so it's best for the energy efficiency of those freezers as well to keep those packed, right, rather than them being empty. So I prefer to use those and to freeze a lot of food um, rather than doing the canning. And plus there's the extra energy intensive aspect of canning uh, and the fact that it makes my kitchen a mess <laughs> and I seem to only end up with like a few pints of something after a lot of work. Um, so I'm not a big canner but if you are uh, hats off to you. Um, so those are the things that are in the pantry. So let's talk a little bit about what's in the freezer or what I have going on in the freezer still and what we're eating. So one of the first things is we're still eating a bunch of fruit from the food forest. So these are currants and some gooseberries. And that's what I love about um, a lot of the berries is you can just harvest them directly, put them in like an old yogurt container or a salsa container or something like that, and then put them directly in the fridge. I also have some um, pitted cherries. So in this case, there is a little bit of processing before you actually put them in here. So I'm adding these still to oatmeal. I'm making muffins with them still. I'm adding them to smoothies. Um, so that's always great. Then uh, this is one of my favorite ways to preserve tomatoes. I oven roast them beforehand. So during you know September time where you got a ton of tomatoes coming out of the garden and you also have the basil as well. So I'm doing tomatoes, basil and garlic usually oven roasting those um, and then I take that and put it in a container 
and freeze that as well. Um, another thing that I do is uh, veggie bouillon, uh, little kind of balls, basically. And basically that's taking all of those, that overabundance of herbs um, that often happens in the early spring um, and part of the summer where you have a bunch of chives, right? Or a bunch of parsley or cilantro or oregano or, you know, whatever it is, green garlic um, or, um, and you just put it, you mix it up in a food processor and then you just kind of dump them like cookies on a cookie sheet. You freeze them on that cookie sheet and then once they're frozen, then you put them in a bag. Uh, and then you put those in the freezer. And then I just add these to soups um, when I'm making soup. And so that allows me to use them and have garden herbs, um, you know, in March. Uh, another thing that I have here is green garlic pesto. I have an overabundance of volunteer garlic in my garden. So one way that I um, use it is by making a pesto that I put in pastas. And then the same thing goes for um, just regular basil pesto. Uh, and again, I'm reusing all of these little containers. Um, this, for example, is beautiful, delicious goat cheese from an um, organic dairy uh, local farmer in town. So eat that. And then these are kind of the perfect size uh, and serving size for creating um, a pesto pasta. And then last are a few other things that I have are celery. And I don't blanch the celery beforehand. And again, it seems to hold up. And it's just kind of, again, an addition to soup. Uh, and then I have some applesauce here too, which, you know, you make the applesauce and then you put it in a container. Um, I also have a grape jam. And the reason that I like, and it's freezer jam. The reason that I like doing freezer jam as opposed to canning, canned jam, is that canned jam uses a lot of sugar. And I like to kind of keep the sugar of in jam kind of to a minimum or the sugar in anything for that matter. Uh, and so this grape jam is just the grapes boiled down um, significantly and then it's just put in this, um, this container. Um, and so that way, and it's frozen, and then I just take it out and we use it. And then lastly, I have some chopped peppers. So again, I don't blanch these. I just chop them up at the end of the season, put them in the bag, and put them in the freezer. And so we've been using these um, with our burritos, mixing them up. They are not, of course, as delicious um, as a fresh pepper, um, but considering they're from our garden um, from a few months back, um, I make exceptions. So, um, so it, ta it tastes surprisingly good uh, when it comes out of your garden. Uh, so those are some of the techniques um, we use. Again, a lot of dehydrating, a lot of just kind of winter storage crops that you don't even have to um, preserve in any way. You just have to store them in, a, in, an, in, an, in the right environment. And then a lot of freezing. So let me know, as always, if you do have any questions and uh, maybe some of the preservation techniques that you use. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.